What is going on, party people? It is I, Famincho, and today it is time to talk about the Tower of God anime series. It is a webtoon that has become an anime, and that's a really, really big deal. I'm not sure if it's the first time that this has happened, but it is certainly a feat on itself, and it's something that if I were a fan of the original source material, the webtoon itself, I would be very, very proud right now, because it's just a big deal. Um, again, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not a fan of the webtoon. I have not read this series before, but I've been hearing about it for quite some time now, and it's because of the fans speaking volumes of its quality. And that quality is made very apparent right from the get-go of the first episode. So we sort of hit the ground running with the first episode. We have our main character, Bam, being thrusted into this Tower of God. And it is said that if you climb to the top of the tower, all of your dreams will come true. And that is made apparent through a very interesting monologue at the beginning of the episode. Uh, his friend Rachel is there because of that. She wants to get to the top. And Bam is there only because of Rachel. He wants to uh, meet back up with her because that is his only friend. It's the only person that has ever shown care to him. And we see that in the flashback. I am so, so glad uh, that little two-minute flashback is there. It really, really helped the motivation uh, for the main character. It really helped me get behind the main character. Because I will admit, was not liking this character. He is your sort of typical dopey uh, isekai protag. And I just, I'm kind of tired of that. I really am. And... It's kind of nice that there is something different there. Uh, I think just the world itself is very different. Definite dot .hack vibes. I know a lot of younger audience members might not know what dot .hack is, but uh, definite dot .hack vibes in terms of style. But what is this world? We get no sense of it in the first episode at all. And I don't think that that's a bad thing. I don't think that that's a bad thing that we don't understand this world right off the bat. But we really don't understand this world. Uh, I don't know where this tower is in relation to this world. I don't know where Bam was. He was like in some cave and tried to break out and she rescued him. Don't really know how far that... You know what I mean? There's no geography here. and uh, it's Everything's sort of metaphorical in the beginning. Even when we first enter the tower, uh, the bunny dude... Uh, speaking a lot of uh, a lot of terms. There's a lot of terms being thrown at us. A lot of weird lore bits being thrown at us. Uh, then we have the two other characters into the fray, and they're talking to him and uh, calling Bam an irregular. We have another beater situation, similar to Sorta Online, maybe. I don't know. Uh, definite Sorta Online vibes as well. Definite Tower of Draugr vibes. We have seen a s series uh, plural like this before, uh, but again, it's the execution where it's all at. And the execution is quite good, I won't lie to you. Uh, the line work at first was a little jarring. Uh, I wasn't sure what kind of direction they were trying to go for, but then as the series progresses, as the first episode progressed, I really started enjoying how the characters were moving and talking to each other and interacting. Uh, I dig it. I really, really dig the art style choice here, and I really, really dig uh, some of the big action scenes as well with this giant uh, steel Pokemon giant monster shark thing. Uh, that was really cool. That was really cool and weird. Just really weird looking. Kind of scary, kind of gross. Was it pregnant? I don't know. It's just weird to look at and really fun to look at. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things like that. Even the bunny dude. Like, is that his eyes or is that his mouth? Is he a bunny? Is he a robot? What's going on? Like, I like that. There's a lot of interesting takes here. It's not your stereotypical uh, fantasy isekai type of series. There's definitely uh, some interesting design choices. Uh, design choices that definitely had me... A little bit like confused like huh okay we're doing this awesome uh, so in this first episode we have our character Bam again entering the tower he has to clear the first floor uh, he kind of does it unintentionally uh, with breaking this uh, ball and then we enter the flashback then we go on to this oh, I'm going too fast hang on there is a point in the first episode where we see the main character Bam unleash the true power of his sword uh, this sword was given to him by a princess and her navigator those characters sort of enter the fray and just start shouting weird terms, as I was mentioning. Uh, things are very, very complicated with those characters, I feel. But she gives him this sword because she thinks that he's cute or something like that. Anyway, he's fighting this giant beast and unleashes the power of the sword. The power of the sword is this beautiful blonde lady that holds him in her arms and calls him handsome. And then he defeats the beast and moves on to the next floor. That is the point in the episode where I definitely was scratching at my head. But then we sort of enter the last third of the episode, and things are just extremely exciting. We are in a battle royale all of a sudden. This is the second floor, and people are dying left and right. It's extremely well animated, extremely graphic, uh, incredible camera angles, just fantastic stuff. And I was kind of blown away by that part. I'm not going to lie to you. I was 
so out by the point with the blonde lady circling around him and giving him magical powers. And then I was immediately dragged back in by the battle royale scene. So, 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 so cool. And then we see all these different characters, the lizard girl, uh, the weird dude with the white hair, just so many interesting looking characters where I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. I am, I won't lie to you. Now, a problem that I have been having with these types of series, with fantasy series, is I'll start watching them and then just get so disinterested later. I tried with Shield Hero. I really did. I got to like episode 10. It just got so boring. It got so boring for me. And I really, really hope that this series doesn't do that. I really hope that this series continues to deliver. I think that with the way that it has started, there is a lot of mystery. And I think that that's going to kind of keep me going and keep me interested. And I think that's the point of it all, obviously. But I won't say that this is a perfect first episode because there's a lot of uh, tropes that were here, a lot of trite things happening. Uh, but its execution and its characters and its world are really, really fascinating to me. Now, again, this is based off a webtoon, a webtoon that, again, I have never read. Uh, but I think that that is sort of where its interestingness is coming from. I think it's coming from the fact that this is coming from a, a Korean uh, author, which is different than what we typically get with anime. Uh, di just different mindsets. Different mindsets making these types of stories. And I think that's where all of its interesting designs come from, is the fact that this is from another country, a different country from Japan, a different country from America, where people have different influences on their art and different in influences on their storytelling. And again, that's made very apparent. And, and that's sort of what makes it exciting. Again, like the line work looks weird right off the bat. And I'm like, huh, this is, this is kind of cool. It's very different, but kind of cool. Uh, I dug this first episode. If I had to give it a score, I'd probably give it like a f three and a half out of five. Uh, there are points of the episode where I was legitimately on the edge of my seat. The soundtrack is perfection. Probably my favorite part about the episode is the soundtrack. I don't want to forget mentioning that. The soundtrack is ridiculously good. I, I was using super big expensive headphones and you hear that bass kicking in, you hear those melodies. Uh, the, the sound design is really good as well. The giant beast and uh, the gunshots as well. Characters just have guns for some reason. Again, super dot hack vibes. Uh, just really, really cool. Uh, stylistically, I think this is one of the most interesting things I've seen this year. And I'm really excited for the episode too. I'm excited to see more of what's happening. They're, they end with a cliffhanger that, that gets me wanting to keep watching. So I'm going to keep watching. If you have watched this series, if you have watched this first episode, comment below and give me your thoughts. If you have read the webtoon, especially comment below because I'm curious how this adaption is going. Again, I'm not familiar with the webtoon, so I don't really know how this adaption is working. Is it uh, picking up in the middle of the story? Is there stuff that's alluding to stuff in the future? Like, or is it just straight up right from the beginning of the webtoon where we're adapting it perfectly? Really, really curious there. All in all, a fantastic episode, and I recommend watching it. It is on Crunchyroll. It is a Crunchyroll production. Uh, Crunchyroll is is distributing it, I'm, I'm assuming. Uh, that's kind of interesting. Definitely a big move for Crunchyroll, something that I think Crunchyroll should have done a long time ago. Uh, it's, it's exciting for them, I, I believe. I think that uh, instead of making their own series, I think that they should focus on distribution. It's a lot cheaper. And I think it's a lot uh, more interesting, acquiring things. Again, that's what everyone's doing, is just acquiring things. And Crunchyroll's realizing that. Look at Netflix with their originals, especially their anime originals. I think Crunchyroll needs to kind of bolster up their library. Because, you know, people aren't watching shows, those weird random uh, Moe shows from 2005, or the weird random harem series from the 90s. They want new stuff. And, and I think Crunchyroll's finally delivering on that front. And that's, again, very exciting. Uh, I'm excited to watch more. I'm excited to see more of these characters. And I'm curious if you are as well. Again, comment below. Give me your thoughts. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Twitch. Um, again, thank you so much for watching. It's always great to be talking about anime on this channel. It has been so long since I've talked about anime on this channel. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, I'm currently quarantined, actually. So, <laughs> yeah, expect a lot more videos coming from me. I hope you guys are all doing okay uh, during these trying times. Until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.